remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Oppenheimer was born in New York City on April 20th, 1904. He came from a family of German Jewish immigrants. His father, Julius, was a wealthy textile importer and his mother, a talented painter with a long lineage in the city. Young Oppenheimer grew in a grand apartment on Manhattan's Upper West Side. The walls were adorned with magnificent paintings by renowned artists like Van Gogh, surrounding him with a world of inspiration. As he reached school age, he attended an elite private school, where he quickly became captivated by the wonders of science. Harvard University beaconed him with its promise of knowledge. And in 1922, Oppenheimer set foot on its hallowed grounds. Initially inclined towards chemistry, he soon discovered a burning passion for physics during a course on thermodynamics. His hunger for knowledge led him to spend countless hours in the library, eagerly absorbing everything he could find. Life wasn't without its challenges for Oppenheimer. Suffering from colitis and inflammatory bowel disease, he had to delay his enrollment at Harvard for a year. However, he made up for the lost time by graduating in just three years instead of the usual four. Eager to continue his scientific journey, Oppenheimer ventured across the Atlantic to the University of Cambridge in England, where he conducted research at the prestigious Cavendish Laboratory. But his life in the lab wasn't always smooth sailing for Oppenheimer, although his intentions were noble. He soon realized that experimental work wasn't his forte. His true brilliance lay in the realm of theoretical physics. Unfortunately, the stress of his graduate studies took its toll on his mental well-being, and he descended into a state of depression, struggling with emotional instability. In search of a fresh start, Oppenheimer left Cambridge and found himself at the University of Göttingen in Germany one of the Europe's leading centers of theoretical physics. Despite his youth, he held his own and impressed the academic community. At the remarkable age of 23, he was awarded with PhD, returning to the United States. He embarked on a journey as a research fellow, first at Harvard's and later at the prestigious California Institute of Technology, Caltech. Oppenheimer's love for science often enveloped him so completely that he would lose touch with the outside world. However, the rising tide of fascism in Europe during the 1930s managed to capture his attention. Like Albert Einstein, Oppenheimer believed that German scientists possessed the knowledge to create a nuclear weapon, a weapon that Adolf Hitler would not hesitate to unleash upon the world. The world watched fearfully as the Nazi invaded Poland in 1939 and Oppenheimer felt a profound sense of urgency. His expertise and dedication caught the eye of the US Army. And in 1942, he was chosen to lead a top secret project that would change the course of history forever. The Manhattan Project. Gathering the brightest minds in physics, Oppenheimer orchestrated a team of over 3,000 people, setting their sight on Los Alamos, New Mexico. The location captivated Oppenheimer's heart. Its picturesque mountains and sprawling plateaus had left an indelible impression during a teenage trip there. Little did he know that this land of natural beauty would become the birthplace of unimaginable power. The US government spared no expense pouring vast sum of money into the project. What began with a budget of 6,000 soon skyrocketed to an astounding 2 billion by 1945. Prior to leading the Manhattan Project, Oppenheimer had already been deeply involved in the field of nuclear fission, the awe-inspiring release of energy from splitting an atom. Before the atomic bomb could be a reality, Oppenheimer's journey led him to teach physics at renowned institutions such as Caltech and the University of California, Berkeley. His passion and dedication transformed these places into centers of excellence for physics research across the nation. Throughout his life, Oppenheimer's path was paved with curiosity, challenges, and groundbreaking discoveries. 
From his upbringing surrounded by art to the relentless pursuit of knowledge, he became an instrumental figure in one of the most significant scientific endeavors in the history, the Manhattan Project. Yet, the consequences of his work would forever weigh upon his conscience. The atomic bomb was on the horizon, and Oppenheimer would soon confront the immense power he had helped create. As the Manhattan Project reached its culmination, Oppenheimer found himself standing at a pivotal moment in human history. The atomic bomb was nearing completion, and the weight of its destructive potential hung heavy in the air. Little did he know that the choice he made would forever alter the course of warfare and leave an indelible mark on his own life. In the scorching summer of 1945, the world was embroiled in the midst of World War II. The Allied forces, led by the United States, faced a difficult decision. On August 6, 1945, the Enola Gay, a B-26 bomber, soared through the skies over Hiroshima, Japan. Inside its belly was the atomic bomb that Oppenheimer and his team had worked tirelessly to create. The bomb code name, Little Boy, unleashed a blinding flash of light followed by a shockwave that raised the city to the ground. The devastation was so unprecedented as the bomb's immense power claimed tens of thousands of lives in an instant. The world had entered the atomic age, and Oppenheimer was forced to confront the consequences of his scientific achievement. The impact of the Hiroshima bombing was a profound shock to Oppenheimer. The destructive force he had unleashed upon the world weighed heavily on his conscience. Three days later, on August 9, 1945, a second atomic bomb, Fat Man, was dropped on Nagasaki, further adding to the devastation and loss of life. Witnessing the horrific aftermath of these bombings, Oppenheimer's outlook began to shift. The immense destructive power of nuclear weapon shook him to the core, and he started to question the morality of his involvement. He grappled with the moral responsibility of scientists in creating such devastating weapon and the potential consequences for humanity. In the aftermath of the war, Oppenheimer's role in the Manhattan Project elevated him to a position of great influence. However, his growing concerns about the use and proliferation of nuclear weapon led him to down a different path. He became an advocate for arms control and international cooperation to prevent the catastrophic consequences of nuclear war. Oppenheimer's post-war life was marked by his involvement in policies and scientific debates surrounding nuclear weapons. He played a key role in the establishment of United States Atomic Energy Commission, which aimed to regulate and control nuclear technology. However, his shifting views and vocal opposition to the development of more powerful hydrogen bombs and the arms race with the Soviet Union drew the ire of those in power. In the early 1950s, during the height of McCarthyism and the Red Scar, Oppenheimer's past associations with leftist colleagues and his vocal criticism of nuclear weapon policies brought him under scrutiny. He faced accusation of being a security risk and disloyal to the United States. Despite his contributions to the nation's scientific advancements, he was subjected to a security clearance hearing in 1954. The hearing, known as Oppenheimer's Security Hearing, was a highly publicized event. It resulted in revocation of Oppenheimer's security clearance and limited his access to classified information. The aftermath of the hearing left Oppenheimer excluded within the scientific community, causing deep personal and professional anguish. In the years that followed, Oppenheimer continued to be an influential voice on nuclear policies, even without the official support of the government. He focused on arms control efforts, emphasizing the importance of international cooperation to prevent nuclear proliferation and the devastation of war. Oppenheimer lived out the remainder of his life grappling with the moral complexities of his contribution to the atomic age. He passed away on February 18, 1967 leaving behind a complex legacy that intertwines scientific brilliance, the horror of nuclear weapons, and a deep introspection on the consequences of scientific progress. His life serves a stark reminder of the immense power and responsibility scientists hold, urging us to consider the ethical implications of our discoveries and the long-term impact they have on humanity. 
Oppenheimer story is a testament to the importance of reflection on the consciousness of our actions even in the pursuit of knowledge and progress.